Betty bought some butter. The butter was so bitter. Betty bought some more better butter to make the bitter butter better butter. Can you imagine if you say this to an aphasia patient and you ask him to repeat it, how would he say this? There are two major types of aphasia, Wernick's aphasia and Broca's aphasia. Wernick's area is Broadman number 22 located on the posterior end of superior temporal gyrus. This is responsible for comprehension, understanding the meaning of words or sensing the meaning of words. That is why Wernick's aphasia is also called sensory aphasia. Fluency is not affected here. So it's also called fluent aphasia. So a Wernick's aphasia patient, whatever you say to him, he is not able to understand the meaning, but he wants to say something fluently. So how would he repeat this phrase? Like this, Betty, 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 Betty. See, there is no meaning, meaningless, but he is having a fluent speech, meaningless, fluent speech. That is Wernick's aphasia. You ask Broca's aphasia patient to say this. What is Broca's aphasia? Broca's area located on the inferior frontal gyrus, Broadman number 4445. This is responsible for motor speech or fluency. And that is why any damage to this area results in Broca's aphasia, which is also called motor aphasia. Since fluency is lost, it is called non-fluent aphasia. How would this patient repeat the phrase? He is able to understand the meaning, but he is not able to speak fluently. So he would say, B -b -b Betty, B -b -b bought some. See, he is able to understand the meaning, meaningful, but he is not able to speak fluently. Meaningful, non-fluent speech. And that was an understanding of Wernick's aphasia and Broca's aphasia. Thank you.